Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Dev Drawer. Uh, sorry we missed last Friday. It was um, the day before Independence Day over here in the United States, so um, I was actually off that day. So I figured I'd record a quick one uh, just to kind of show y'all how to use a really cool thing in Visual Studio that I haven't actually been able to go on. And I know y'all been missing the uh, developer tutorials because I've been focused on Unity and learning you know, 100 days of code. So I figured I'd take a little break from that and just start building something uh, really quick and just maybe show y'all a way that we can use Visual Studio to do live reloading of code. So whenever you're saving it, um, it just automatically reloads that page. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started in doing that now. So as you can see here, this is my usual look for us um, inside of Visual Studio Code we can go over here to this uh, extensions tab and we're going to search for live server and live server here only thing we need to do is just install it it kind of gives you the information that you need um, to be able to set it up and be able to run it um, but I'm going to show you the way that I have it set up on some of my other development that I do and you'll see that it's a uh, it's pretty cool how you can use it Okay, now that we have this set up, if we read through the documentation here, there's a button on the toolbar down at the bottom that says go live, or you can use these uh, commands Alt-L and then Alt-O, or Alt-L and Alt-C to open and start it. Same thing on a Mac here. Um, usually I just use the go live that's down here, and I'll show you. It basically starts up a 127 uh, IP address with a port of 5000. Uh, but you can also configure that so let's say um, it doesn't handle PHP code very well but if you have an existing server like if you're using the you know sub hundred dollar server that I showed y'all how to set up a few weeks ago um, you can actually take the settings of your live server extension and point it to that live that server that you have set up and then not use the live code server that it builds for you but you can actually use yours and every time you save it it still refreshes that same screen but in this instance I'm just going to show you how to do a very simple like HTML website and then you can see the differences as everything's going through so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go into let's say we want to create a new folder and we're going to say live and then inside of here I'm going to create a new file and let's call it index.html so it does pop up first and I'm going to now click on the go live button and we're going to go ahead and open it with Chrome and as you can see here it's got a live reload of the index.html uh, index file that we're currently working on so let's throw in uh, let's put in HTML5 use an emit and then we're going to change this to instead of saying document we're going to say live server now if we save that file should have done a live refresh over here um, let me see so I think there's a setting that I need to do inside of this so let's go to our settings here and first thing I want to do that I usually do is change my autosave uh, the autosave right now is set to a thousand, which a thousand milliseconds, which means basically every second autosave. So I'm going to turn on my autosave after a delay, and we're going to set that delay to say 600 milliseconds. So basically, every little over half a second, it's going to autosave um, everything for us. Now we close out of this, and let's say we want to make a change here. Uh, let's just say H1. and then we're going to do test and now it automatically saved and as you've seen on the browser side it refreshed so let's do test 2 not clicking save or anything but it's updating it in real time and what's cool about this is that it takes everything into an account uh, takes everything into account what you're doing so if you're adding bootstrap to it which uh, let's go ahead and add bootstrap so let's see bootstrap and we're going to just grab the example here actually you know what let's just grab the styles and put them up here 
and then let's grab the JavaScript and put them down here. Okay. Let me see. That is really big. Yeah, I guess you guys can read that. Let me let me put in uh, the word wrap. Talk a word wrap. All right. So it's a little bit. You know, right now we're not going to go into too much depth of everything that I'm adding into it, but I just want to show you what it looks like. So let's say we want to do div class equals container dash fluid and then we're going to do our h1 again and this is going to be a fluid container. Alright, so then we're going to just go back to this page and everything's where we put it at. So we let's come in here and do um, I'm going to use Emmet, so let's do div row, and then I want to do div column, uh, I think it's star 3. There we go. Alright, so now we're going to have three columns, so this is going to be 1, 2, and 3. So div class row column, column, column. Why is it not putting them in columns? So it's adding it there. Uh, let's see, console. There's no console error, so it's hitting the JavaScript and the CSS. Hmm. That's strange, but it's probably an issue that I'm not seeing. Uh, wait a second, what is that up there? Slim.js. Oh, it's because I added the JavaScript twice. Why did I do that? Here, let's copy this. And there. Now we should be able to view it. There we go. Okay, yeah, so definitely don't put the don't, don't put the JavaScript in there twice. I don't know how I or why I copied that twice, but uh, but as you can see here, using HTML, it works out pretty good. Um, I mean, it works out really good for HTML code um, to be live reloaded. And then if you ever um, just want to get out of it, you just come back down here and you click on uh, the go live server again. It says the server is now offline and then it brings you back up to the go live. So if we refresh this, it won't show anything because that live server doesn't technically exist anymore. So there's other ways to do it. Like previously, we used WAMP to set up um, a local server with PHP, and then we also used our tutorial to set up a sub $100 um, Linux box using a solid state drive. Um, and you can essentially just go into like I uh, like I said, you can go into the settings for live server, and um, whenever you go into the extension settings, there's a way down here if you scroll down here. So this is currently where it's pulling the 127001-5500 that you see on the screen but you can change that to a local like you can do your db.local that we've previously done um, I'm not going to show you how to do that one in this one because I believe there's a few other settings that we'd have to configure I might create a whole video about it um, because it is something pretty handy to use whenever you're developing code with PHP because if you try to run a PHP server in live server with the 127001 it just basically shows the file system uh, rather than actually running the code so there's a few settings that you need to do to do that so I might just create another video that details that part of it but for this tutorial um, this is a really cool um, thing that you can do in Visual Studio especially whenever you're working with like APIs and stuff like that and you're trying to hit external JavaScript or external APIs you're using JavaScript you can actually see everything happening in real time and it makes it speeds up your code development because you're not having to save and then refresh and all this kind of stuff it does everything for you so it saves every half a second or one second you know whatever you want to set it at and then it just shows that server so just one more time to recap or recap what we've done um, the live server extension for Visual Studio Code, it's done by Rickwick D or Day. Um, just make sure that that's the one that you use because there's a few different ones that are on here, but the one that I've used in this tutorial is the, the Rickwick uh, D Day uh, version of it. And this is the one that I use. It's very good. It's free. Um, so there's nothing really too bad about this. But, you know, testing things mobile 
um, whenever you're using uh, a live reloaded server that you're not having to constantly refresh and save it makes speeds up your process dramatically so let me show you that real quick so let's go live again it's gonna open up a new tab and we're gonna be here so now if we can um, if you're familiar with the uh, developer uh, the developers uh, tools I guess in uh, Chrome if you right click on something and then you go to inspect um, you can uh, pull this out into another window or you know you can toggle the device here so it turns it into the mobile version of it so I, what I'm gonna do is you're not gonna be able to see what I do here but I'm gonna go ahead and toggle it here so you can see what it looks like and then I'm going to move this over to uh, it's gonna be outside of that window so I get the full picture of what I want to look at and then I'm going to say I want to do it for iPhone X so this is what this would look like on an iPhone X and right now it's got three columns that are basically going next to each other even on the mobile because we haven't coded it over here so let's get out of that and come over here and let's say we want to have on the medium we want it to be four and then medium four and then we can leave this one at column or we can also set it to be medium four as well but as you can see here it reloaded it automatically so we can see that mobile version of it so if you're doing mobile first development which you should be um, you go in there and you can code it to look the way you want it to look on mobile and then work your way up to a desktop device but this extension just allows you to do everything a lot quicker um, so I hope you learned something and I promise I'm almost done doing the uh, the stuff with uh, unity it was just something I wanted to learn but apparently it's not that interesting as much as it is to me to you guys so um, I'm going to start doing some more tutorials like this and getting back into the development of it um, I, I've been working a lot using something called SammyJS lately for a project for my business and um, it's something where you can create routes using JavaScript and jQuery and stuff like this uh, outside of PHP uh, which makes it whenever you go to use something like Cordova to build an app um, everything is wrapped into it um, so you don't have to worry about you know any kind of uh, calls that may be made that is uh, using PHP that wouldn't work on a mobile phone um, so I might be going in tutorial how to use that properly because I have an entire website that I've built from it. It was something that I recently started using and started learning how to use, but it makes app development using Cordova much more simpler, uh, or PhoneGap for that matter, uh, or the Iconic framework. You know, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you could do it to create these wrappers, and I think that that's something that most new developers should learn how to do if you don't know how to do native code. You know, native Java or you know how to build an iOS app in native code either so this will definitely help that part so that kind of tutorial is coming up as well but in the meantime if you like this tutorial please leave a like um, you know leave a comment smash the like button and um, I guess for now this is it so I will talk to you later